Going live. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. We are going to have a good time tonight because I've got quite the, the rig out here. Um, so last time we played with the microscope, uh, we were using the, uh, the really nice one that I just got with the, the 10 times, um, which, yeah, that's happy. Um, the problem is for some things, it's just really too small. Um, so I actually now have a four times as well that we can play with the two of those and a few other things that we have coming up. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you are new to the Wood by Right Lives and watching this recorded, then there is a list down in the description of all the questions that have been asked, as well as timestamps, so you can kind of jump around with that. Uh, if you are watching this live, then go ahead and throw your questions in the chat, and we'll get to as many as we can. Um, but uh, we'll see how many we can, depending upon the, the topic at hand. <laughs> um, yeah, um, lives every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. And uh, as long as I'm not sick, like last week, we're, uh, we're good to go. But we're all uh, feeling a lot better this week. <laughs> um, oh, uh, yes, if you are... Uh, local to the Rockford, Illinois area, um, or within driving distance, and would like to be notified of um, local get-togethers, we're thinking about doing a uh, 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 get-together at my place um, and actually cleaning out my lumber rack, and I've got a bunch of other things, of uh, tools and things to give away, so if anyone's interested in that. Um, down below, there is a form you can fill out that you can put in your information to get notified of local meetings, um, as well as I pull the one-on-ones that I do um, out of that. So if you want to be notified of that, then fill out the form down there. Um, upcoming events. The next big one that I know of, we just had the uh, the tool meet here. Uh, the next one is actually the national meet, and this is in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to be out there. We're still working through things, um, whether or not that will actually happen. Um, but if anyone is actually near the Baltimore area and would like to have some fun, um, I'm planning on flying into Baltimore. If someone wants to um, uh, pick me up and spend the uh, the, the time uh, with me, actually we could even share a, a hotel room and split the price on that, uh, let me know. That might be a fun time. So if anyone's near Baltimore, let me know. So let's actually uh, dive into this. Um, is that a super chat? It is. Immediate mom joke. <laughs> Paul is putting the pressure on because two weeks ago I was not prepared. <laughs> Are you prepared this week? I am. What we got? Well, it depends how active Paul is. And you turned off the little woo 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 thing. Yes, uh, because I had to plug in other things. Uh, um, where do you keep dad jokes? What? In a database. <laughs> That's no moon. That's a database. <laughs> so let me show you guys. I'm going to go freehand here for a moment uh, and show you what we've got set up here. So we have the main microscope. Ooh, exit that. Um, so I have a microscope objective on the end there. Currently, that's a four times. Uh, but then going through the 400 millimeter, it, it brings it to um, something much smaller. <laughs> um, and then over here, I've got the 10 times that we will uh, be using so we can bounce back and forth between the two. I've got the light oh, here to it? hopefully add more light into it. And then I've got a GoPro here because uh, a lot of people wanted to see a closer view of what was actually happening to the microscope outside. So we'll be switching between all of those um, as well as this throughout the live. So if I'm on the wrong camera, uh, let us know. Though you'll probably end up letting us know about uh, 30 seconds too late. <laughs> It does look weird flag. though. They were saying that like it What's does. That? It's almost like a delay. Like, uh, are weird. there people saying it's glittery outside? Glittery. Outside. Are, is is anyone else saying it's jumpy out? It's like the frame rate seems slow. Are they saying that? Yeah, they, they are saying oh, that. Okay. Uh, I really can't help with that right now. Um, yeah, I'm just saying it just. Yeah. I don't know if are we using a different camera. No, same camera. Um, mm -hmm. It's. Yeah, YouTube has been having issues with lives lately. Um, ah. He's having some really bad issues with mine um, Sunday. So, yeah. But, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Come back and watch it when it's all recorded and it'll be much better then. Um, but less fun and entertaining. Yeah. Okay, so. You have a super chat just saying no. Oh, just about to start talking. What do we got? <laughs> 
don't complain. <laughs> JS Trucking and Guitar says, thanks for that info, info on Instagram earlier. I just hope that the Gettysburg location also has room for at least the bobtail truck since that one is closer to home for me. Yeah, that one that one will have room for it um, because that's a that's a, um, a hotel complex. And there's actually like three or four hotels there, so there's plenty of plenty of parking for that. So yeah, um, and that's a national. Um, so for those of you who don't know, the tool meet that I was at Sunday and we did a walk through is tiny in comparison. So on Thursday of the national, that's the big day. That's the 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 where everyone backs up their trucks and sells stuff out in the parking lot. Um, and that's usually some of the best deals you can find in a crazy amount of tools. Uh, then Saturday, everything goes inside. I uh, use slightly better quality tools um, in there. And then on Sunday, excuse me, on Friday, everything goes inside. On Saturday, it's inside again. And it is um, usually a little bit cheaper prices because people don't want to then pack everything up and take it all back out to their car. So they're willing to wheel and deal on Saturday. Um, and as well as there are several talks that go on about the history of tools and how they were used and some demonstrations um, and tours of local things. It's, it's a really cool, it's a whole convention around hand tools. Um, you do have to be a mem member of the MWTCA, um, which that's just worth it by itself. Um, but then you can um, pay for the, the, the conference and go, all to, and go to all of that. So it'll be in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, mid-June, I want to say 16th to the 19th, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yes, let's do this. <laughs> I was going to say, I, there's a mom joke due whenever. Oh, okay, what do we got? Let me just pull this out. Okay, what do horses say when they fall? What? Help, I fall and I can't giddy up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that one. So tonight I've got whetstones, I've got diamonds, um, and I want to kind of look at those back and forth. So I mean, we looked at these last time, but I want to actually show these one more time on here. See if I can get up in closer. Uh, oop, not that one, this one. So, no, this one. Yeah, it wasn't the right one. Except for we're looking at the wrong thing. Let's try looking over here. So this is what I want to try and dial in. And I'm trying to do all of the bounciness here rather than later. So this is the extra coarse. Excuse me, this is the coarse diamond. Um, yeah, you can see the individual diamonds on there. And you can see some scratches in the plate itself. It's kind of interesting. And then we've got the medium. Uh, this one is actually the diamond, the DFM fine. Got a little bit of dust on them. And we're currently looking with the uh, the four times, so it's actually a, a bit bigger. Um, it, this one you can see a lot of like aggregate. It's it's getting kind of hard to see the individual ones on there. And then we can get over here to the extra fine. <laughs> And this one is really hard to see. Um, you, you can't see the individual diamonds on this magnification. I have to go down smaller. Uh, what you're seeing, those white things, are actually the dust. Um, am I getting, not getting an image? Nope. I just realized that. Why am I not getting an image all of a sudden? I don't know. I'm not getting an image from anything. Are they? Are you guys able to see this? I don't know if they can. I oh. can't. Let me try resetting this. Oh, the fade to black button was that cut. <laughs> Let's go back to this again. I've got an FTV button on here. I bumped apparently. Uh, so let's go back onto here. This is the uh, the the extra fine, um, and in this magnification, you can't see the individual diamonds. You do see a lot of scratching in the plating, um, but you can't actually see the diamonds. Oh, and here, let's move over to the, the strop, because uh, this is actually kind of interesting. I was looking at this for the first time today. Let me actually get my other flashlight in here to get a little more information on this. So the strop, 
um, really just looks like you'd expect it to look, which is kind of surprising because it's just green aggregate on top. Although I haven't looked at it in the, the 10 times magnification yet. So what I want to show is particularly the difference between each one in the scratch pattern. Um, and I'm going to look at each one individually with both objectives as well. So we're going to start here with the course. And on this one, I'm actually going to do it at a 45 degree angle. So we get the scratch marks rather than going perpendicular to the tip, they're going at 45 degrees to the tip. I like to do that a lot of times when I'm grinding a new one because I'll do one at 45 degrees and then I'll do the next one at 90 degrees and I can always make sure the scratches are different between them. So, oh shoot, I'm going to have to move this around a little bit. Uh, let's do it this way. Can I do that? Yeah, we can do that. Because I want to hold it in my vise so we can actually see what I'm doing here. Because it's all about holding it at an angle, except for I didn't, huh, mm, I didn't think through that through it. I did it earlier, but I did it with Do you need me to hold it or something? Device. No, the problem is the leg of the, um, what is it? The leg tripod. of the tripod is in the way um, of getting it at the right angle, and the handle is too big to put it on this side. So I'm going to try and do it like that. That's not going to work. Maybe it will. Let's see if I can do this. It is the four times objective, so that's a little bit easier to see. So this is the four times objective. And you can see the edge is very, very rough. And part of that is because you're actually seeing the burr coming off the back. Let me see if I can Remove that. Let me roll that burr up. I'm going to hit it on the back on my finest plate so that the burr goes from in line with the bevel to now being in line with the back. Let's see if we can actually see that on here. Um, get this close to being in line. Yeah, it's not going to show up on here. This one you can start to see the extra fuzz, but uh, not so much. So on this one, we're going to go from 45 degrees to 90 degrees. If there's any questions or things I need to say, just so kind of stop me. What are you doing tonight that's oh. different from the last time we did this? Well, time? I'm going through that on this, um, but then I want to show the difference between diamonds and whetstone. Um, because I had a whole lot of questions about that um, because they cut very differently and I actually want to show the slurry of the whetstone but we want to go through the diamonds to have something to compare to. Because this is very much like last time right here except for I need a better way to hold it. Maybe I should do it with a... With a okay, nope, not quite. Just a little more. There we go. Actually, maybe I should do it with the... There's a way to get this... Oh, oh, that's how I'll do it. Ha ah, ha, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Ha ha ha. Smarter. <laughs> but is it every day? <laughs> it's out here. I had to move it at about that angle. But I think that'll be enough. So now I can put How the bevel. How much do you trust your vice to hold your nerics? <laughs> and now I can move down into that. Should be about right. Hey, hey, hey! I'm Fat Albert. So, here are the scratches from the uh, medium. And so on this one, you can see there's some big scratches there that are going at 45 degrees. Those are the ones that are left over. 
but predominantly I've got the inline scratches that are a little finer than those 45 degree ones. And then you can also see the burr that is starting to develop on the outside edge. So that's a little more stable. I like that. Now we're going to go on to, uh, let's do this one at the other 45 degrees, which is really hard to hold myself at. Yeah, that'll do. And then let's feed this up in through here. Come on, let me out so I can see it. Chisel on the floor! <laughs> so I'm trying See, it's not to get the me chisel I'll close have to worry to about ruining be. the chisels. It's James himself. There's a reason I installed rubber flooring. <laughs> oh, come on. Exit. And now my camera's giving me issues. There. Yeah, now I need to move it that way. Yay, there, I found it. I found the chisel. <laughs> <laughs> Except for now I need to move the camera to get right up on that edge. So I'm actually, I have this sled that I thought, no, nah, this won't work for it. But actually, it does work pretty well. Ah, there we go. So here we've got, let's see if I can move that a little bit more, the scratch pattern on the edge. Oh, come on. Every time I think I can get in focus, yeah, it's about as good as it's going to get. That is kind of interesting. You can see how they're at 45 degrees from the edge, but then back a little ways, there are still scratches that are straight in line. I'm trying to see how those would actually occur. Oh, that's my finger grease. That's why it looks different. <laughs> and I can't get my finger in there to change it. So that is, you, with the diamonds, you see that very intentional scratch because diamonds are basically an aggregate that's sticking up and as it goes past it just rips material off. Um, and that's why it's very very difficult to get well it's pretty much impossible to get a mirror polish off of diamonds. And that's what a lot of people really want is that mirror polish because it looks sharp. Um, but the Mirror polish isn't necessary for the sharpness. It's one of those things that just looks good. So here I've got a 400 and a 1000 grit um, stone. And so the 400 is very close to the coarse. So I have a question. What's that? This is all about camera work right this second. The little magnifying glass thing. The you light? Have. Well, it's a light. Because yes. you can't see anything you're doing on the workbench because it's all hidden by the light. I mean, I know you're just polishing her. Oh, uh, well, yeah, here, let me bring this one a little closer for right now, then. I'm just saying we can't see anything you're doing outside, so. Yeah, it's, I need another camera. <laughs> what I need is a cameraman who can actually adjust things. Just put the GoPro on your head. Yes. <laughs> have cables running off of me to feed it in. <laughs> I do have one more input on the black magic. So on this one, with the diamonds, uh, with, the, with the whetstone, you're actually creating a slurry on top. Um, let me change this one. So this one I'm going to do at um, 90 degrees. So it's going to go perpendicular to the edge. And I'm going to try and create that slurry and show you what that looks like. So now this is the 400 grit. And already it looks far more polished because the 400 grit looks like 
um, what I would expect off of the fine stone um, from a visual standpoint like that. But let's put the whetstone underneath here and take a look at what that slurry actually looks like. Um, because this is out of Does it focus. have a fringe on the top? A slurry with a fringe on the top. <laughs> so, now... Having fun with this cable. Let's see if I can pull this up to do like that. Do you need to hold it? No, I need a better cable. <laughs> I've already spent enough money on this rig. <laughs> Can't spend another $20 cable. Trying to find the focus. There. Now let's see if I can actually show this. Okay, so here we go. This, uh, that green that you see, that's the fresh stone. That black you see is loose aggregate and iron that was mixed up into the plate. And so you actually get this, um, what am I looking for? Let me see if I can get this spot here. This actually has a lot more, there we go. Over here, this is where the slurry buildup, you can actually see it sitting on top. That rolls around, and that gives you a slightly different scratch pattern. So let's actually take a look at that scratch pattern, because this is what really was interesting to me earlier, um, because it's a 400 grit. So if you compare it to um, a diamond is at 400 grit, you're going to see something very different because this was straight in line so you would expect to see scratch marks that are all perfectly parallel and out of focus <sighs> there we go there we go and one of the top things from last time is that I was moving around too much on live Okay, here we go. And so now, you can see there are scratches that are, most of the scratches are in parallel like you expect. But you also see these other random ones that are going off at odd angles. And you're also going to see that some of them are deep and some of them are shallow and it is a little bit more haphazard. Um, you will see more of the burr because I didn't clean off the burr last time, so the burr is actually growing out longer and longer in comparison. But now I'm going to move it over to the other side, which is a 1,000 grit. And I wish I had one of my high, my high, I used to have it all the way up to 8,000, but I got rid of those when I got my diamond plates. So on this one, we're going to do it over here. Uh, let's see, that was 90 degrees, so we're going to turn it back to 45 degrees. And you start to see that coming off far more. You start to see the metal on the stone. Man, I mean, to the eye, I cannot see the scratch pattern in this. And this is actually more coarse than my finest diamond. So I'm really interested to see this. Let me bring this one over. And do that. So let's bring this in here. Yeah, there we go. So here, those black areas again are the iron. And you're seeing this slurry that holds that iron and that's what's sliding around on top but then you can come over into areas and bring it into just the green over here is out of focus again just think about turning the knob there is the fresh stone with no slurry on it So, 
Now let's look at the iron itself. I'm trying to find what are the actual practical things we are learning from this. And a lot of it's just, aha, you already know what's going on because it's part of the game. Oop. Okay, there we go. And there, point it down. There are the 45 degree scratch pattern. And there's a lot of them that are parallel, but it's also just a little bit more messy. Uh, and not messy in a bad way, it just is not as they're not quite as parallel or as clean. But you're also getting a slightly finer cut even though the grit equivalent is fairly similar. And that was one of the things that really kind of surprised me is um, you know, 1000 grit as a compared to a 12, excuse me, a, a 1,000 grit is a pair of 1,200 grit. You'd expect them to be very, very similar, but when side by side, um, they're, the 1,000 the grit wet looks to be a finer cut than the uh, 1,200 diamond. Um, but the 1,200 diamond is far more uniform and similar depth cuts, um, so it's kind of a, one of those things that's Interesting. What can we learn from that? I don't know. So let's actually put this on the strop because I had quite a few questions about that last time. Um, <laughs> so, what time is it? 30. On the strop, I've got, actually, we'll save that for next time. I'm going to show fresh honing compound on there. And if anyone wants to see the finer objective, the, uh, the 10 times, like we had last time, because everything we're looking at now is twice the size of what we were looking at last time. So I'm going to work that burr off. There we go. And let's see. A little more. Got something? Oh, that's why. I've got a thing underneath there. Something was feeling odd. Okay, so now let's look at what does this look like? And let's try and find it. Oh, wow, I got it right on. Except for it's not bright enough. Now we got to play the game. Now see, now this is interesting. I didn't see this last time. I wasn't. I didn't go strop after the whetstone. Right. So this time, what camera do you? I'm, I'm moving it until it stabilizes. <laughs> this time, um, it did not get rid of the scratches. It did some of them. I'm trying to find an in-between ground. There we go. And so you can see these polished areas in between. But there are deeper scratches and shallower scratches. So I would have to strop more after the whetstone than I would after the diamond. Huh. Well, let's put this on the diamond now. Those are at 45 degrees. Let's go back to the diamond. And let's go with the extra fine. which is supposedly about 1,200 grit. Let's see what that looks like, because that was at 90 degrees and the wet stone was at 45 degrees. Now let's play the game of let's try and find it again. Okay, just those few quick passes got rid of all the marks. Get it in focus first. 
There we go. So here's the difference between the diamond find, the extra find. I mean, it got rid of all the scratches from the whetstone very, very quickly. But you can see these scratches we are, can't are very. See anything. That's because I'm in the wrong one. Okay. There. These scratches are, are very different from um, what you just saw coming off of the whetstone. And so they, they should be the same because it's 1,200 and 1,000. Um, but I'm very surprised at how fast the diamond got rid of the scratches from the whetstone. So let's see what it looks like with the strop then. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm finding this absolutely fascinating. These are the types of things that I would love to do. I would love to find a way to actually create a spreadsheet <laughs> that actually like measures the grooves and the depths and the scratch patterns. and I, That would be fascinating. I may bore my wife to death, but I would love it. <coughs> Let's see what that looks like. So just a few passes on the strop. Let's see if I can find that in here. There it is. Back over this way. Now we play the focus game. There we go. A little bit over this way. And here you can see how, oops, sorry. You can see how most all of those scratches, so you can still see some of the leftovers from where they cut a little deeper, but most of the scratches have been polished off from the strop, uh, from the, the diamond. So the strop is far more effective with diamonds than it is with whetstones. That's actually kind of interesting. I did not expect that. What, uh, what questions or observations things would be? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find questions that are related to this exact thing. We've got a smattering. Or if there's something particular someone wants to see. Oop. Um, Mobius Flight had asked, have you considered ever using diamond honing paste? Um, I have used it in the past. So I'm trying to set this up so you guys can actually see what's going on here. Um, I have used it in the past. I don't like it um, for basically the same reason that I got rid of whetstones. Um, is they're just, it's messy. Um, diamonds are so nice because there's no mess to them. Um, it's, it's a wipe when it's done and it's clean. You put it aside. And that's the big reason why I switched to, to diamonds over whetstones, uh, which I'd really like to actually get some finer because my, my finest now is a thousand whetstone, which isn't, that isn't very fine uh, when it comes to wet tunnels. But, you know, diamonds, you, you go to 1,200, and um, it was kind of interesting to see 1,200 and 1,000. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I, I, when people say, well, what grit is your diamond? Uh, putting a grit on diamond is trying to compare it to whetstones, and the two of them cut differently. And so they have different scratch patterns and, and different aggregates that go into it. And so it's, um, you would expect them to be equivalent, but they're, they're not, um, which is kind of interesting. I was very fascinated to see that the strop cleaned up the diamond marks very quickly, but it didn't clean up the whetstones. Um, very quickly. So it was kind of interesting. What other questions we got? Um, what you okay, see? I'm pulling out ones directly related Is there anything to I should put the smaller objective, the uh, the 10 times on there? Okay. Oh, I got wet. Okay, hang on. I got super chats. I got questions. Um, Scott Kilburn asked, James mentioned that the 400 grit wet stone is about the same as the coarse diamond stone. Perhaps you could show one chisel sharpened with each for comparison. Um, that's basically what that I what just you did. did. I don't know. I'm pulling them out. Yep, sorry. Trying to keep you on the right camera and everything else. Okay. Um, <laughs> Richard Buckman asked about 
how that how all of this compares to lapping paper. Um. Oh, that would be interesting. I don't have any in stock at the moment, so that would be fun. Um, sandpaper, lapping paper, cuts much more like diamonds do uh, because it's an aggregate that slices over. It's not that slurry on top that is rolling around and moving things in. Um, and it's interesting because uh, one of my, my theories with after seeing the slurry is that um, you, got some, you got an unevenness and depth of cut um, so in other words, with the water stone, you got some deep scratches and some shallow scratches all beside each other. And I think part of that is because you do have that slurry on top, and so you might have a, a particle that rises up a little bit higher on top of other things and puts a deeper scratch in. Um, but because of that, you have a lot more um, definition between the two, and so you do get more of a mirrored finish off of the water stone as opposed to the diamonds, because the diamonds are all equal and all making the exact same scratch. Um, and so because you have all of those parallel lines, you're never going to get that mirror finish that you expect off of the water stones. Um, but no, I don't have any, any sandpaper, lapping paper here to, to try that with. That would be fun though. What's next? I was trying to figure out what they were talking about with lapping paper. It really high grit sandpaper. All right, two super chats. Oh. Um, Yan says, thanks for answering my question by email recently. And then follows by, have you heard the dad joke about the three holes in the ground? I don't think I have. <laughs> Neither of I, so you need to give us the answer. Um, so we'll just wait patiently for that one. And then Peter DeWitt says, I am loving this. I would be extremely interested to see the incremental sharpening of a V-tool carving chisel. Um, at this range, it would look exactly like a, a, a chisel because there'd be no way of showing the, the rounded, edge. what is it, where'd it be? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have a way of showing the rounded edge because you'd only have one, the, the, the rounded surface, you'd only have one small point in focus at any one time. And so it would be the exact same as showing the, the chisel. Um, but it would be fun to play with that. Let me know your ideas on, on what you're thinking with that. What? <laughs> Ian replied back the answer to the dad joke. So, okay, the three holes in the ground. Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I like it. Good job, Ian. We like that one. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> What do you call a spy in the bath? A spy in the bath? Mm-hmm. What? Bubble 07. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going double O bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another super chat. Uh, JS Trucking Guitars. Um, I've noticed that Diamond does give a slight mirror finish when using a figure eight pattern on the stones. We're going to try that because I used to do figure eights, um, but I got out of it. But that would, you know, because you're always going in different directions, let's give, let's give that a try. So it's been a while since I've done that. It's also harder to lock your, your wrist at that. So I'm just going to do this on. At this angle, the, it looks like you're going to do it forever. <laughs> just going to do this on the. Extra fine. Uh, just the math joke. It's okay. It is actually more of a mirror finish to the eye. I think I was back a little bit too far. Let's see what this looks like. That's a really cool idea. I actually never thought of that. I should have done that. Now we play the game of let's find. Huh. I'll show Waiting you as soon as I get suspense. in focus. There we go. So, there's the figure eight pattern. It's probably why you would get a little bit more of a mirror polish because uh, the light gets 
uh, rather than being all bounced in the same direction, you get that scattering on there. I want to see how fast that actually cleans up on the strop. So let's do the exact same I normally do. See, that's one of the things I love about the strop is you do get that gorgeous mirror polish off of that. Okay. Ah, the camera bounces on me. Y'all hear the sound when he does the lives and stuff. I get to hear it practically every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is the, here, this is what it looks like after the strop. So you still get a lot of those minor scratches, but they're, they're harder to see. And so that's, that's what a mirror polish looks like right there, which is kind of surprising up close. <laughs> I have to think about that. So if you do like the mirror polish and you want to get it on diamonds, Figure eight. That's a cool idea. Thank you. I'm going to have to integrate that somehow. <laughs> What's next? Uh, let's see. Okay. Just making sure I've got everything there. Um, okay, we talked about doing a V. Are you going to do a V gouge or not? Um, I. Uh, no, the setup time on that would be, would be okay. too much for right now. Um, yeah, the, the problem with the V-gouge is any, any rounded surface, you can focus on one particular plane of that rounded surface at any given time. You can't see the whole rounded section. Um, but it would, it, would up, it would look just like the chisel. Um, it would just be on a rounded surface. Okay. Um... Now I think we've gotten to just general questions. I don't think I have any more. Okay. Well, if someone has something they want to see or wants me to use the, the finer objective on, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just yeah. answer questions. I'm trying to keep an eye on both things. We've gotten through the things that I wanted to talk, what I wanted to look at. <laughs> no. Uh, let's see. Warren Munn asked earlier, <clears throat> I've just gotten hold of an old spoke shave. Not sure of the make. The only markings on it are on the blade, and they say Stanley, Stanley Rule level zero something after the zero but can't read what was the original finish um at that time it probably would have been a japanning um which is a uh, um not lacquer what's the word i'm looking for um turpentine um turpentine's the thinner um, it's an asphaltum finish um, so if asphaltum blo and turpentine um, and then you bake it onto the surface. Um, Hand Tool Rescue actually has several really, really good videos on how to do Japanning. Um, probably the best I've seen on YouTube. They're long, but he goes into great detail on it and everything you need to know. Um, that's, that's what I follow. I use the exact same recipe as him. Um, but if you want something that's a little easier, um, you can use a, um, an enamel, um, like an engine block black. Um, a lot of the, the, the farm... Um, I'm looking for farm implement black is usually one of the more common ones. It has an ever so slight brown tinge to it, um, but yeah, spray paint works fine. <laughs> What's next? So, Tom Engel wants to know what did James Bynes sell at the Sunday meet? Um, I only bought two things. Um, I bought a plane. Uh, for a friend out of the country who wanted one. Um, and so I shipped that to him, and then I bought a saw that I knew of two people who wanted that, um, and so they're getting that as well. So I buy things for people who cannot get them where they're at. Um, as to what did I sell, uh, I sold a bunch of things. I sold a bunch of auger bits. I sold a, um, a post drill. Oh, excuse me, a, yeah, a post drill. Um, 
Um, I sold uh, several saws. I sold a bunch of things. I sold a, a router, um, electric router. It was an old one, but an electric router. Um, a lot, just a bunch of odds and ends that I had lying around. <laughs> What's next? Yeah, our shed and basement still look full of tools. <laughs> I, well, I narrowed it down to one shelf rather than three. Oh. And I got rid of the, the big um, post drill that was down here. So. Oh, you did. I only have one left. I've sold three of the four that I had. It followed me home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very important question. Wolfpaw Armory wants to know, is your katana down here in the shop or up in the house? Um, oh, yes, that one is down here. I love how you to be like that. Which one? one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so this one I commissioned uh, from Destiny, and uh, she did some really, really cool work on it. Um, and so I'm actually going to be making one similar to it and showing the two off. I'm going to make a, uh, uh, I want to say wasabi, uh, wa wa uh, wakasashi? wakasashi? No, that's not right. Smaller wash one. Wash on, wash off. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this one's really cool because you actually you can take the pin and slide it off and she has um, her um, maker's mark underneath this. Okay, really, really so cool. for those of us who don't know, who's Destiny? Um, she is um, very active on the Wood by Right Hive Mind Discord server, uh, but she makes a lot of uh, prop swords and guns um, and does some really, really cool work. So yeah, if you want something like this, contact her and uh, really, really sharp. I'm, I'm happy with it. <laughs> but I had to, I had to think because I actually have a, uh, a collection of um, um, actual katanas upstairs uh, from when I was in China. So, yeah. <laughs> right next to the wedding picture, folks. <laughs> it's romance. <laughs> Keeping it sharp. <laughs> Anyways, um, Dennis Miko. I used a sharp and Oh, pop Wolf Paul is Destiny. Oh, cool. What's nice that? to actually connect one from another. So, oh, that's why. We got it now. See, we don't know names if they're not your taglines in here. I should have known that because I connected with your uh, your Instagram, which is Wolfpaw. So, yeah. so everyone go check out Destiny or Wolfpaw's Instagram. Now I got to go look it up because I'm intrigued. <laughs> um, I like Instagram. That's my thing. Uh, let's see. Back to Dennis Amico. I used a sharp and polished one inch old antique chisel on a red oak knot to shave it flat. Well, the edge dented up. Did I have it sharpened to the wrong angle? Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, I, by the edge dented up, that could mean a couple of different things. That could mean it chipped out. Uh, that could mean that it rolled over. Um, it's usually one of those two. Um, and so if it rolls over, that means it's soft steel. If it chips out, that usually means that it's hard steel um, or that it, it's, it's hard for the work. Um, and if you're running into that quite a bit, it often means that your angle is too shallow. Um, for really fine work, such as carving chisels, you usually want it around 20 degrees. That's a really, really fine angle. Um, for regular bench work, um, I have all of my chisels at 30 degrees. Um, I found that to be a really good in-between durable angle. Uh, the higher your angle is, the more durable it is. My, my mortising chisel, though, those are at 35 degrees because um, I beat on them and I want them to withstand it. Um, so, yeah, um, the higher the angle, the longer the edge will last. The lower the angle, the easier it is to push in the work, but the more delicate the edge is. So, if you are running into that a lot, it could be that your steel is um, of a poor quality, um, but it could just be that you probably need to put a higher angle on it. Dennis says it rolled over. Okay, softer steel then. Okay. Yeah, my, my first thought is um, quality of the steel. Is it a cheap one? In which case then, yeah, that's just the way it is. Um, and then what angle? So depending upon your use, bench chisel, usually around 30, carving chisel, around 20, um, mortising chisel, 35. 
Sorry, you have your clamps out, and I'm trying to figure out, are they actually clamping something? Yes, those are actually clamping the top of the end table. Oh, end table. I need to make mine, too. Anyways, I have lots of projects I need and to get top, back top. To. I have the bottom top down. <laughs> I was working on it a good bit, so hopefully the next video on that will come out in a week or two. You mean you're going to get rid of the bedside table you've had since we got married? Yeah. Yay, it's old. Oh, here's I made before we got married. <laughs> huh. Yeah. I made and that with my dad. He made two that were very, very similar for his house. I digress. <laughs> Anyways, let's see. Joel Smith asked, what's your opinion on super high grit ceramic stones? Um, they are very, very pleasing. Uh, they are, the, the, the mirror polish you get off it and the feel you get off it are fantastic. Do they get any sharper? No. Um, the, the actual sharpness of it isn't, no. Um, but they are very, very pleasing to use. Now, in my book, they are a lot of work because there's extra maintenance on them. They're a bit more messy, you're dealing with water, and that's the reason why I don't use them. Um, but as to the sharpness, you can get to the exact same sharpness off of uh, the diamonds and strop as you can with going up to an 8,000, 16,000, 20,000 grit um, stone. Um, but if you're going to anything over 8,000, then there's no reason to use a strop because that's basically what you're, you're doing at that grit. Um, a lot of people really like them because they can, you just feel like you're getting more honed. It just, it, it's a very tactile thing. Yeah, they feel good, and that's the, that's the big difference. What's next? John Hayes wants to know, how much metal on the chisel has to be gone before you buy a new one? Um, three or four lifetimes worth. <laughs> um, like, I mean, well, this, I mean, if I use this chisel for the rest of my life, which I may very well, um, I would be surprised if I sharpened off more than an inch. Maybe. Maybe. Um, and, and, you know. <laughs> um, though if you're talking some antiques, sometimes you'll get some that have been ground, and anytime someone does grinding, they're taking off far more material um, than is necessary. And, and you'll, you'll find those where they've come halfway back. Um, in that case, then they've turned in from a bench chisel into a butt chisel. Um, and so it just depends on what you use it for. So if you start off with really long paring chisels, then someday they turn into a bench chisel, and then a little while longer they're into a butt chisel. And then eventually you're back here to the tang, and, and that's when you just can't use it anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, that's a lifetime of work with regular sharpening um, is maybe an inch of steel. Would you have said a different answer if I wasn't in the room? <laughs> Hmm? Teasing, you're not giving them a case to buy new ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, I, I, honestly, these are, are basically a, a lifetime chisel. I mean, I may end up bashing the handle and replacing that, but I'll probably still keep the chisel itself because I really, really like these. What's next? Oh, sorry. Or how much time do we have left? Um, it's 54, and I have one more question pulled out. So. Okay. What do we got? And I'm not sure if this is different from the question I just asked because I'm not familiar with these ones. Um, James Mossett wants to know, do you ever use Shapton glass ceramic sharpening system? Curious about the 16,000 grit stone finish on a blade under magnification. Um, I used to. Uh, then I switched over to diamonds. Um, that's basically what I was talking about before is that uh, they're, yeah. Um, they feel really good, and there's something that's very, very pleasurable about going up to those really high grits. But an actual functionality of the sharpness, um, of actually testing the actual sharpness of it, um, there's no physical difference in their actual cutting capability. Um, but they feel so good to do on that. But yeah, no, I, I um, diamonds are just cleaner. There's less fuss. It, there's, it's much, much quicker to do this than it is on. Um, water stones so that's why I changed over doesn't mean doesn't mean that they're they're bad or they're one's better than the other they're just two different styles if you really like your time spent sharpening then you're probably going to want wet stones um, water stones oil stones um, those will 
they're, they're fun to use. They're a lot more work and you have to set aside the time to actually do the sharpening. Um, but when you do it, they're, they're very enjoyable. Though if I, if I do get some set, it would, be, it would be kind of fun to put those on. I don't have any of my, my fine grit anymore. Um, thousand is as low as I have with the Waterstone, so yeah. Uh, I think I'll do it, unless you have something else. Last minute. Cool. Then we'll wrap this up. Um, if you are um, local and would like to get on the list, because um, we're probably going to do a couple get-togethers this year, um, I'll probably do a uh, save some wood from James's fire. So we'll have a whole pile of um, scrap lumber you can come dig through, um, as well as all my antique tools. I'll probably just give them away to anyone who wants to come. Um, so I have a link down below where a little form you can fill out to be notified uh, when we do that. Um, I think I'll do it for now. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.